Welcome back, everybody. Uh, we're going to be doing a little educational tidbit. So quickly, I'm going to sum up uh, tread switching, just in case anybody doesn't know. But if you already know what tread switching is in terms of mana, then you can go ahead and skip like the first minute or two of this video, because I promise you there's something a lot of you don't know based on the fact that I asked Twitch chat, and none of them really seem to give me the right answer. Banana slam giant. So first, we're going to talk about tread switching for uh, mana purposes. So we're going to use some mana real quick, and I'm going to show you guys tread switching for mana. So the way that tread switching works is it's going to change your stats, right? So when you use your strength treads and you put them on int, notice how right now we are 218 out of 327 mana. That's about two-thirds. It's actually exactly two-thirds, but, you know, for the sake of math, it's about two-thirds. Which, when we switch our treads to int, we're going to remain at two-thirds. The numbers don't say the same. The percentage stays the same. So if I were to just normally cast my stun, I'll be at 217 mana, right. which is what you just saw. But if I switch to int, now the 110, which we saw the 110 was a third of my mana, now the 110 is only a fourth of my mana. So what that means, instead of costing myself 33% of my mana pool, I'm now costing myself 25%. So I'm now going to cast the stun, and then we go back to Strength Treads, and you see that instead of having the 218 previously, we now have 257. So that's what the primary use of Tread Switching is. So the other use of Tread Switching is when you're using abilities, or sorry, use, uh, abilities or items that give you HP or mana. So when you are using a Bottle, a Salve, a Clarity, or even a Mango, notice how Mango... It says it's going to give us 100 mana. So if we pause right now, if we were going to give ourselves 100 mana, we want to do it on not intreds because intreds give us more mana. So that means the 100 mana is less percentage of our current mana. So right now, the mango is a little less than a third of our mana. But if we were to do it on intreds, it's almost a little bit less than a fifth of our mana. We're going to go to the same amount of mana both times. 200 mana. We now have 300 out of 350. So once again, we are at 200 mana. And if we were to increase our mana pool by switching to intreds, that would be really bad for us because it would give us less mana. So we'll show that real quick. And instead of 100 mana, notice how it only gave us 80 mana because we used the mango on intreds. So whatever stat you're increasing or whatever, if you're increasing mana or health, whatever stat is used to give you that, so in the case of mana, it's int. In the case of health, it's strength. You should either swap your treads off of strength if you're using it for health, swap your treads off of int if you're using it for mana, or swap them into agi as like a baseline, especially when you're using anything that gives you both, such as bottle or wand. So in this case, wand, the best thing we can do is have our treads on agi for the same idea as what we saw before. And something that's even better, Wand gives us 180 mana right now with the 12 stick charges that we have. So a really cool thing you can do is not only swap your treads off, but you can backpack or drop any item that gives you intelligence or strength. So this wand is supposed to give us 180 mana and 180 health. If we were to just do it normally right now, bear with me guys, we would be sitting at 195 mana and 868 health. But what we can do is we can drop our Bracer very briefly in Wand. You'll see a lot of high-level players do this all the time. It's only proper. And instead of giving us 180, it looks like it gave us about 220 HP and about 190 mana. The less stats you're dropping from an item, the less impactful it is. But in the late game especially, if you still have a Wand and you have something like a Scotty in your inventory or like even like just a satanic some i mean some item that gives you a ton of stats it can be way more impactful that you drop your items or backpack them obviously be very careful not to get them stolen whenever you pop wand charges something you'll also see people do with items that are over time such as salve is say they had an echo saber like this in their inventory if they want to make sure they get to full hp they'll salve themselves and then they'll do this to make sure that they have as little strength as possible while they are salving and that will get you the most value out of the salve. So the whole reason that this video came up was because I mentioned Agi Treads as a way to farm. So obviously on Agi Heroes, the best way to farm is to have your treads on int when you cast the spells, 
agi when you are hitting things. That's because agi gives you the damage because your primary attribute is agi and also gives you the attack speed. While strength treads only give you HP and int treads only give you mana. However, it gets a little bit more complicated when we're dealing with non agi heroes. This mainly comes into play with strength heroes, especially high damage strength heroes. So Sven is like the perfect example that a lot of times you want to stay on agi treads when you're hitting. And there's a big reason why. A lot of people were like, it's obvious, BSJ, we want to attack faster instead of do more damage. But it's really, like, you can't chop it up to being that simple. So right now, when we're ulted especially, it's going to matter when we're not. But when we're ulted, if we look at our damage with agi treads, we are sitting at 220 damage. When we go to strength treads, let's drop the echo saber. When we go to strength treads, we're sitting at 230 damage. So 210, 230. So 210 damage, 230 damage. Now let's look at this creep real quick. If I have 210 damage, how many attacks does it take to kill 550 HP worth of a creep? Three. If I have 230 damage, how many attacks does it take to kill a creep with 550 HP? Three. So what that means is we don't give a shit about the damage. And this applies a lot with any high damage strength hero where, yes, theoretically, you might do more damage with strength treads. Maybe theoretically you do slightly more DPS with agility treads. But a lot of the time, it takes the same amount of attacks to kill something because the damage difference is so small that you would prefer the 10 attack speed. So the higher damage hero you're dealing with, the more likely this is to be the case. So what you'll see a lot of the times is that players will farm Easy. creep camps with agi treads. Because you're going to see here, it's going to take... Oh, I don't have cleave. It's going to take three cre three hits to kill that, right? It took me three hits to kill that creep. I'm now, now going to kill an identical creep. One, two... And yes, I do extra damage, but why do I need extra damage if my last attack is to finish off the 31 HP rather than what we saw before? So that's why people go on agi treads when they're farming on strength heroes. If you're dealing with higher HP targets, aren't you more likely to want the strength treads in order to farm faster because you have more damage? It's even more so the case if you have possess mass because it heals you per attack, not percentage based. But also, when you are getting damaged by creeps, that creep damage is 100% physical. So if we level ourselves up to like a normal level on Sven, level up 9, while we're farming, we've got, yes. got treads. So we have treads echo saber, and when we're taking damage from creeps, the cool thing about it is is that our HP regen doesn't change all that much when we switch off a strength tread, which is just one difference. But when we're getting damaged by the jungle creeps, our armor goes up by one and a half. I know it only looks like one, but it goes up by one and a half. Notice it went by 1.7. So what that means is all the physical damage we're taking is going to be less, or it's going to be higher percentage of our HP, but we're going to be taking less. So if you have any regen items, any item that gives you HP regen flat, like a ring of health, or an item that gives you lifesteal, you're going to be taking less damage, and then every bit of regen you're getting from it will be higher percentage of the total health that you have. So you're effectively taking less damage, but then you're also healing more. Even though the damage you take will be about the same percentage of your HP, the effect you're getting from sustains and healing will be greater. So it's usually better in the early game, especially to be farming with agi treads for that reason because when you're hitting 20 jungle creeps in a row every little bit of armor every little bit of sustain is going to add up for you a little lot of little bit of tidbits with tread switching here hope you guys learned a lot and uh you guys can use this to maximize your efficiency in your games matters a lot if you like this video like comment subscribe all that kind of stuff